हेलो एंड वेलकम टू टीम वी इन फिजिकल डिजाइन वी आर डिस्कसिंग वेरियस इश्यूज इन द फिजिकल डिजाइन सो प्लीज डू लाइक दिस वीडियो एंड सब्सक्राइब आवर चैनल आवर चैनल इज यूट्यूब डॉट कॉम स्लैश टीम वी एल एस आई सो इम्पॉर्टेंट इश्यूज लिस्ट ऑफ इम्पॉर्टेंट इश्यूज आर हेयर वी आर प्लान टू डिस्कस फॉलोइंग इश्यू इन दिस सेशन सो लैच ऑफ इश्यू एंटीना इश्यू इलेक्ट्रो माइग्रेशन इश्यू आईआर ड्रॉप इश्यू वॉन्चिप वेरिएशन सिग्नल इंटीग्रिटी एंड सेटअप एंड होल्ड टाइमिंग इश्यू आउट ऑफ दिस इश्यूज वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस फर्स्ट फाइव इश्यूज अप टू ऑन चिप वेरिएशन सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट दी सिग्नल एंटीग्रिटी एंड क्रॉस टॉप सो लेट्स बिगिन अकॉर्डिंग टू ए रिसर्च कंडक्टेड बाय द कॉलेट इंटरनेशनल रिसर्च इंक वन इन फाइव चिप्स फेल बिकॉज ऑफ सिग्नल इंटीग्रिटी सो सिग्नल इंटीग्रिटी इज अ वेरी चैलेंजिंग इश्यू especially in the lower technology nodes and high speed chips uh, so what is signal integrity let's uh, try to understand it by its definition so signal first we'll uh, talk about the signal signal could be defined as an information in form of wave or impulse which is used for communication between two points in digital form it is either in state 1 or in state 0 so signal could be uh, typically in this format uh, either it is 0 or 1 uh, in digital uh, in digital signal uh, and it switches uh, to uh, between 1 to 0 uh, regularly interval in regular interval uh, and uh, we can define the integrity uh, by definition integrity means complete or unimpaired impaired or we can say that maintaining the actual form of anything over a time without any distortion is called integrity uh, so signal integrity could be defined as uh, the replication of entire signal while transmitting from one point to another without any distor- distortion in its quality or uh, in broader perspective we could say that signal integrity is ability of an electrical signal to carry information reliably and resist resist uh, the effect of high frequency electromagnetic interference from nearby signal signal integrity addresses two concern in the digital design first is timing of signal so does signal reach the destination when it should supposed to reach and second is quality of signal uh, so when signal reaches is it in good condition uh, so uh, timing timing is everything i am repeating again timing is everything in high speed digital design uh, so the goal of signal integrity is to ensure reliable high speed data transmission from one point to other point inside the chip through the uh, metal lines with increased data rate and lower technology node maintaining the signal integrity is big big challenge uh, in nutshell uh, in uh, in a nutshell if signal travels through a net without any distortion signal integrity is high if she, Uh, there are lots of noise added on it or distortion occurs or delay occurred signal integrity is less so factors on which signal uh, integrity depends or uh, factors which dif- uh, affects the signal integrity signal integrity may be affected by various factors but major reasons are number one crosstalk uh, crosstalk uh, Uh, could affect the delay and noise of the signal uh, second is ground bounce third is ir drop fourth uh, factor is antenna effect fifth is fifth is electro migration uh, we have already discussed other factors in this series of lectures uh, so in this session we will discuss about crosstalk issue okay so first one we will discuss here about crosstalk so question is what is crosstalk 
and very simple word crosstalk could be defined as a phenomena in which logic transmitted in one net creates undesired effect on the neighboring nets or switching of signal in one net can interfere in the neighboring net which is called crosstalk when a signal switches it may affect the voltage waveform of the neighboring net the switching net is typically identified as aggressor and the affected net is the victim how and why it affect we'll explain it later uh, so suppose this is uh, a net and it is connected to the logic here uh, and uh, near to uh, this net there is another net uh, it is also connected to the uh, logic here uh, so uh, between these two nets there are uh, dielectrics while the fabrication if it is in either in uh, same metal or in different metal if it exists in the same metal then uh, then the, there will be uh, uh, coupling capacitance or uh, mutual capacitance uh, between these two nets uh, and if it is from the uh, 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 inter uh, metals like m1 and m2 or m2 and m3 then there will be interlayer capacitance okay uh, so there uh, definitely there will be a uh, capacitance in between these two nets uh, so uh, if if this net is switching and it creates uh, um, undesired effect in this net then the net which switches and affects the other net is called aggressor and the net which uh, affected is called victim so crosstalk is uh, very severe effect especially in the lower technology node and high speed circuit and it could be one of the main reason for chip failure uh, so crosstalk mechanism we will talk about the crosstalk mechanism how it occurs uh, so crosstalk occurs via two mechanism uh, first is our inductive crosstalk and second is electrostatic crosstalk so inductive crosstalk caused by the magnetic field and electrostatic uh, crosstalk is caused by the electric field so inductive uh, by the magnetic field and electrostatic by the electric field let's uh, see more details about these two uh, so suppose there are two nets here placed near to each other uh, one net is carrying the signal and connected uh, so connected it to the signal source and other is connected to the ground and having some resistance uh, so uh, the net which carrying the signal will carry a, a current uh, through it and uh, as the signals uh, vary its value of the logic of the signal vary its current will be vary so a varying signal a varying current will create a magnetic field around it uh, we can model it as an inductor in both the nets here. So there will be mutual inductance between these two nets. Okay. Uh, let's see the its simple equivalent circuit. Uh, so uh, we can model it as an inductor and it is carrying a uh, uh, signal and other nets. Uh, here is the other net. Uh, so due to the uh, mutual inductance. Uh, it will develop a uh, voltage across uh, across this uh, resistance okay uh, so let's see the uh, second part uh, electrostatic crosstalk mechanism so suppose again there are two nets placed near to each other and one net is carrying the signal and other net is connected to the ground uh, through a uh, resistor uh, so uh, definitely there will be uh, uh, coupling capacitance between these two nets uh, as uh, we have the uh, dielectrics between these two nets uh, so uh, in equivalent circuit we can uh, see here uh, the, uh, this model will have a equivalent circuit like this and coupling capacitance is here so there will be a voltage uh, will be uh, uh, raised uh, in across this register let's see more about this uh, so inductive uh, crosstalk 
the electric current in the net creates the magnetic field around it. If this magnetic field is changing, uh, it can either radiate energy by launching radio frequency wave or it can couple to the adjacent net. Such coupling of magnetic field is called inductive cross talk and in uh, electrostatic electric voltage in the net creates the electric field around it. Uh, if the electric field is changing, it can either uh, radiate the uh, radio wave or uh, can couple the capacitively to adjacent net. Such coupling of electric field is called the electrostatic cross talk. So, inductive cross talk is mainly uh, because of mutual inductance and uh, electrostatic cross talk is because of uh, coupling capacitance. So, out of two mechanisms explained here, uh, I have explained it very briefly. Uh, so, electrostatic crosstalk is uh, uh, mechanism is more significant and problematic than inductive crosstalk. Uh, so, in this session, we will talk only about the electrostatic crosstalk. Uh, so, electrostatic crosstalk. Main region of electrostatic crosstalk is the coupling capacitance between two nets as we have seen here. So, let us understand the various capacitance associated with the nets. Uh, suppose this is your substrate in which your uh, transistor has been uh, fabricated and uh, there are lots of uh, contacts over it. And then we uh, put a dielectric material over it before the metal one come and metal one will be fabricated. Uh, and uh, between these two gaps, uh, uh, means uh, metal to metal gap, we, we will uh, fill it with uh, dielectric and there is uh, no uh, place uh, which is empty. So, so every place is uh, uh, filled with the dielectric. So, uh, dielectric will come between these two metal layers. Again, we will put the dielectric over the metal and fabricate the metal 2 and so on, metal 3, metal 4, uh, metal 5, metal 6, depending on the technology nodes, how many metals you have. Uh, so, there are various metal layers over it uh, and fabricated in the same way. Uh, uh, so, let us see the capacitance. Uh, so, uh, in a simple way, there is substrate, then uh, metal 1 is coming. Suppose these are the metal 1s, then metal 2 is coming, then metal 3 is coming, and so on. Uh, so, capacitance first capacitance is in between the uh, metal 1 and the substrate, and it is called substrate capacitance. Second type of capacitance is in between the uh, same layer of metals, uh, it is called lateral capacitance CL, uh, it, it occurs between uh, same layer of metals. Uh, so, here also it will, uh, uh, it, uh, there will be uh, lateral capacitance between metal 2 and metal 3 also. Uh, and next is uh, the interlayer capacitance CI, it uh, forms between uh, the interlayer of metals like metal 2 and metal 1, metal 3 and metal 2 uh, and so on. Uh, and also it will uh, form if metal uh, 2 is not present here and metal 3 and metal 1 is directly from metal 3 to metal 1 again the interlayer capacitance will uh, form. So, these uh, are the various uh, uh, capacitance which uh, forms uh, in between the substrate and metals and uh, in between the metals and metals. Uh, so, uh, in electrostatic crosstalk, uh, uh, suppose this is your aggressor and this is your uh, victim net and, and there will be a capacitance between uh, them, uh, capacitor will form between them. Uh, again, uh, uh, this uh, victim net have a capacitance between the substrate, so C1 and C2, suppose the capacitance uh, between the substrate and uh, victim nets. Uh, since your uh, substrate is connected to ground, so uh, it, this capacitance is connected to ground, but this capacitance is connected between the uh, aggressor net and the victim net, not uh, uh, to the ground. Uh, so, there could be various cases. Let us see it. Case 1, uh, if aggressor input switches high to low, means this net is switching high to low and victim input is at constant 1, and this, this net is constant 1. Case 2 could be uh, aggressor uh, input switches low to high, this net switches uh, now low to high and this uh, net, uh, victim net input is at constant 0. 
okay uh, case 3 could be aggressor input switches from high to low and victim input switches opposite to it means low to high case 4 could be aggressor net switches from high to low high to low and victim input switches from also from high to low uh, means aggressor and uh, uh, case 3 is uh, in uh, both the net is switching but in opposite direction and case 4 is both the nets is switching but in same direction so we will see one by one uh, all these case and uh, possible cases uh, so uh, first start with the case 1 uh, case 1 in case 1 uh, suppose our uh, aggression net is uh, input of aggression net is switching from high to low and uh, victim nets input is uh, at constant 1 so since uh, this this net is at constant 1 uh, its output uh, should be constant 0 or like this way now our uh, aggression net uh, uh, input is switching high high to low uh, uh, this this point will switch from uh, low to high opposite to this uh, as this node is switching from low to high uh, it will start charging and uh, this capacitor will start charging ok and uh, this capacitor will act as a leaky capacitor and some charge will transfer to uh, this node this victims node so what will happen uh, it will create some range in voltage volt uh, of this uh, this node so uh, as it will charge uh, this 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 point will see a spike or a glitch like this okay so this is called glitch or a spike or bump uh, why it happens because of this uh, coupling capacitance or mutual capacitance between these two nets uh, its intensity means height height of glitch i will depend uh, will depend on various factors we will discuss it later uh, anyway it will uh, uh, see a spike or glitch by the victim net due to uh, right uh, switching at, uh, aggressor net from low to high okay let us see the second case. In second case, uh, our uh, aggression net is switching from low to high and uh, victim net uh, is in constant 0. Okay. So, uh, as the victim net is in constant 0, it is uh, 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 this, this victim, victim uh, node should be at constant 1 like this. But since it is uh, aggression at uh, input is switching from low to high, it's, uh, this uh, node will uh, switch from high to low. So initially it was at uh, stage 1 and it will switch to stage 0. And uh, this node is at state 1, at state high. So there will be a potential difference in this direction. Uh, so our charge will uh, so this this uh, mutual capacitance will uh, act as a leaky capacitance and some charge will flow in this direction so because of this flow of charges uh, the potential which is high uh, initially high here will start degrade due to this leaky capacitor uh, so we can uh, we will see a glitch which will lower the potential uh, due to this uh, switching at, of the aggressor net and we will, find, we will see a glitch uh, means low glitch here at the victim node. So in both the cases uh, we have seen that there is a glitch in victim net due to switching of the aggressor net. So far we have seen that uh, due to switching of the aggression net there is a glitch in the victim net ok let's move forward so cluster glitch 
we have seen that due to crosstalk effect from the aggressor net there is a sudden glitch in uh, in the static logic of the victim net uh, so if our victim net is at static 0 or static 1 it will no more static 0 or 1 it will have some glitch due to uh, due to uh, change in the uh, potential of the uh, 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 due to switching of the aggression net if the aggression net switches from low to high and victim net is in constant zero then due to crosstalk effect victim net gets a sudden rising glitch as as we have seen in the previous slide uh, so uh, suppose the aggression net is switching from uh, low to high and uh, initially it uh, the victim net is at zero it will see a glitch a rising glitch here and in other case if the aggression net is switches from high to low and victim net is at constant logic one uh, then due to crosstalk effect victim net gets a sudden falling glitch means low glitch uh, so you can uh, see here if the aggression net is switching from um, high to low and victim net is supposed to uh, remain at the logic 1 it will uh, see a glitch uh, low glitch here due to this uh, aggression net switching uh, so sudden glitch in victim nets due to crosstalk from the aggression net is called crosstalk glitch so effect of crosstalk glitch let's see it so glitch could be either potential unsafe or and result the functional failure or sometimes it could be safe also so let's see uh, let's all uh, it's all depends on the glitch height uh, either it will be potential unsafe or it will be safe uh, it it all will depend on the glitch height so before talk the glitch height uh, let's talk about the transfer characteristic of cmos uh, cmos first so this is the CMOS, this is the input and this is the output. If we plot this input and output over a, uh, in a graph, it will come like this. Uh, so as our input is 0, output is, uh, this is the output in y axis and input in the x axis. As our input is 0, output is high and as our input is increasing, output is going to decrease in this way. So this is the transfer characteristics of a CMOS device, a CMOS inverter. Uh, so there are two critical points where slope is minus 1 uh, I mean 45 degree where uh, from this slope if we draw a line in the output uh, the V out it will call as uh, voltage output high and uh, from this uh, this point will call voltage input low and again uh, for the next uh, uh, next uh, critical points where uh, mm, uh, minus 1 slope comes or 45 um, uh, it's 135 degree slope comes uh, this this means uh, it's uh, uh, slope changes uh, is this point uh, the uh, perpendicular line on the uh, v out uh, axis will call is called voltage output low and uh, perpendicular line drawn to the input line it called voltage input high so why we are discussing these things because i want to introduce the noise margin uh, in uh, to understand the glitch height uh, in proper way uh, so if we draw all these things uh, in a single axis uh, this is the noise margin plot uh, where in x axis it is time and y axis uh, we have plotting the voltage uh, so if we uh, plot all these four voltage over uh, a single line it will come uh, first volt voltage output low first then voltage input uh, input low then voltage input high and voltage output high in this way okay uh, so uh, the uh, this region uh, i mean voltage output low to voltage input low is called noise margin low and uh, the region uh, between uh, voltage input high to voltage output high input high will come first uh, so this region is called noise margin high so this is the concept of noise margin and and the region between the voltage input high and voltage input low is uh, termed as undefined region 
uh, so see here uh, if uh, our victim nets is at constant one uh, our uh, uh, this node should uh, uh, this node is supposed to have a uh, constant zero at all the time but due to cross tuck we have we see a glitch here okay uh, so this glitch uh, could be treated by nest logic either uh, zero and and somehow if this glitch is treated as one by this logic uh, uh, it it uh, results the functional failure because because uh, ideally it should be logic zero and due to cross talk only uh, its logic changes uh, so all depends on the cross talk uh, in its uh, glitch height so suppose our glitch is uh, fall in this region means glitch height uh, is false between the vol and vil i mean uh, noise margin low region uh, so if anything any voltage uh, in the input in between the noise margin low it will treat it as the uh, logic zero by the nest logic so this this region this region uh, will be treated as the uh, low uh, logic zero by the next logic so so this is our safe glitch uh, it, it it will be treated as a zero by the next uh, logic and uh, next uh, uh, gate but if the logic falls in this region means uh, we have a higher glitch over here then uh, so that its uh, glitch height falls in noise margin high then any voltage falling in this region will be treated by this logic means this uh, this gate as a, a logic high so this is uh, very dangerous because ideally it should be a logic zero but due to cross talk uh, it will see a glitch and due to this glitch uh, now this logic will be treated as one by the next uh, uh, gate so this is called potentially unsafe glitch and another case could happen that glitch is fall in between your undefined region uh, so we are not sure about uh, this uh, uh, this region uh, it could either uh, treat it as a logic zero or logic one by the next uh, gate so uh, so it is very uh, so it is called undefined region and we cannot predict uh, what will uh, will treated by the next logic for uh, such a glitch so uh, again this is a unsafe glitch again we have seen that if we lower down the supply voltage as our uh, technology node shrinks we uh, scale down our uh, supply voltage also uh, so lowering down the supply voltage lesser noise margin will be available here uh, and if noise margin is lesser its impact of cluster glitch is more uh, because this this noise margin is going to shrink so uh, impact of noise margin will be uh, more so effect of cross talk glitch uh, an unsafe glitch could be treated as wrong logic as we have seen here by the next combinational gates or flip flops or blocks it could uh, glitch could shake or reset the memory data uh, glitch could result wrong logic level and functional failure of the chip so we can see here a potentially unsafe glitch especially potentially unsafe glitch is very dangerous and it could result in the functional failure of the chip so now we need to understand on which factors the height of cross talk glitch depends so let's discuss about the cross talk glitch height so we have seen this type of setup uh, in which aggression net and, and this is the victim nets and this is uh, this aggression net is switching from uh, low to high and victim net is seeing a glitch here uh, so cross talk glitch heights depends on 
first thing is our uh, coupling capacitance between uh, two nodes so uh, first first factors on which cluster glitch depends is the coupling capacitance uh, so height of glitch is uh, directly proportional to your uh, is proportional to cm divided by c1 by c2 uh, so if the mutual capacitance is more your glitch will be more and again mutual capacitance it depends on the uh, distance between these two nodes uh, so mutual capacitance is, in, uh, is inversely proportional to the distance. So if your distance is low, your mutual capacitance will be high. So in lower nodes, as we know that uh, our uh, 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 throughouting nets is uh, more closer. Uh, it comes closer and closer as our technology nodes shrink. So uh, this mutual capacitance is going to increase. And if it is going to increase our coupling capacitance, uh, and, uh, uh, if our coupling capacitance is going to increase, it is more prone to crosstalk. Uh, so uh, glitch height, uh, glitch height, is inverse, inversely proportional to uh, the distance between two nets. So closer the distance between aggressor and victim nets, larger will be the coupling capacitance, and in results larger will be cross talk glitch height. Uh, second factor is aggressor drive strength. Uh, this, this, this is the aggressor and its drive strength. If it is uh, the drive strength is higher, uh, slew of this transistor will be will be lesser and uh, I mean it will uh, switch very fast and it will cause uh, the faster slew rate and ultimately higher cross talk glitch will uh, occur. Uh, factor 3 is victim's uh, drive strength. Uh, so, uh, drive strength of uh, this logic. So, if if it is uh, victim's drive strength is high, uh, uh, it is not easy uh, to uh, change this uh, value. Uh, uh, if if this, this uh, logic has high drive strength, so it will be difficult to change the value. So, higher the drive strength, lower the cross talk glitch. Uh, I am keeping uh, this uh, explanation is very brief as uh, we have to explain many things and uh, this session is going to too long. So I am trying to explain it uh, uh, in appropriate way not going in too much details other, otherwise uh, it will, uh, this, session, this session will be too longer. Uh, so, uh, 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 we have discussed about the uh, crosstalk glitch height uh, and two cases uh, how the glitch occurs. With this, I am uh, uh, with this I am stopping this session here, uh, and we will continue in the next session. So, for thank you, thank you for watching this session. I will continue from here in the next session, uh, which will come uh, uh, very soon. In, in this channel. Uh, so please do like this video and subscribe our channel. Our channel is youtube.com slash Thank you. Thank you for watching.